Hello everybody, my name is Teacher Rich and this is Oxford Online English. Today we are talking about lifelong learning. How is everybody doing today? So to start off we had a quick poll and in the poll I said how fast should I speak today? And the results are in with 14 votes. Hello, 14 votes. Maybe we should do the poll again. I'm going to do this poll again in five minutes. And we'll see. We'll see if the result is the same. At the moment, we have 50% at normal, 28% at very fast. Do you know what very fast is? 14% slow and... 7% at very slow, which is okay. Right, so what's the plan today, Rich? Today we're going to chat about things you have learnt, talk about lifelong learning, practice listening, Learn new vocabulary and then some time for questions. Welcome to Mr. Farewell, to Pallavi, to Anushka Verma. Good eve, ma'am. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, hello, Mina. Hello, Ahmed Gafsi. Hello, Ahmed. How are you? Hello, Anushka again. And hello, Ina and Sonia Batrini. Mamma mia. Hello. Uh, are you from the north or the south of Italy, Sonia? And hello to Shazaman Khan. Shazaman Khan. Where are you from, Shazaman? I'm going to guess Afghanistan or Pakistan. Where are you from? Hello, Kamrul Al Islam. Hello, Adil Idris. Hello, Jagadish Naik. That is an Indian name or Bangladesh? Is it? Hello, Daisy. Hello, Kib. Hello, Demos. Hello, Badir. Afghanistan, says Shazaman. All right. I have a lot of students from Afghanistan at the moment. Afghanistan and Kurdistan. A lot of students from Afghanistan and Kurdistan. But I haven't learned any Af Afghani yet. Or is it... Um, what's the language? Is it Afghani? Yeah, I haven't learned any, but uh, I, I love my students from Afghanistan. They're really funny guys, funny guys. All right, so learning everybody. Hey, should we do that poll again now that everybody's here? How fast should Rich speak? in today's class and we're going to have a very fast normal and a very slow i'll give you an option yasser says hello i'm yasser mohammed and guita this is my first time here from thailand hello guita i haven't learned any thai yet but I hear it a lot. I hear a lot of Thai. There's a Thai lady who lives near me who owns a business in Thailand. And she talks to her business a lot. And I hear Thai. But I am learning Vietnamese. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder, Manuel. That's very nice of you. Good evening, says Kishan Sejua. Hello. Yasser says, I live in the UK. Oh, that's great, Yasser. Which part of the UK do you live in? Yes, Kishan, I can see you're Indian. You have Indian name for sure. Romelia's here as well, but she hasn't joined the membership yet. Join the membership. Hello from Vietnam. Mm. Ciao. Chang, chang. Ang chào ang, ang chào ang, chào ang. How's that? Is my Vietnamese good? Chào ang. 
Maybe you're younger than me. Chào em, chào em. Cảm ơn em, cảm ơn em. Cảm ơn chị, cảm ơn chị. Cảm ơn bố mẹ, cảm ơn bố mẹ. That's important one. Cảm ơn bố mẹ, bố mẹ, bố mẹ. Cảm ơn, cảm ơn bố mẹ. Okay. All right, folks. So today we are talking about lifelong learning and you want me to speak normal speed. But some people want me to speak really fast. 20% want me to speak very fast. You want me to speak very fast? Very fast? Very fast? I can do very fast. No problem. Did you get that? I can do very fast. No problem. You want to speak very fast? Let's go. I can do it. Do you want to talk about? What should we talk about? What should we talk about? What should we talk about? <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to talk about lifelong learning. Boom. So one thing I've learned in the last six months is how to make positive habits. One thing I've learned in the last six months is how to make positive habits. Fast speed. One thing I've learned in the last six months is how to make positive habits. One thing I've learned in the last six months is how to make positive habits. <clears throat> It's a nice phrase, isn't it? One thing, one thing I've learned. These are like the stress. One thing I've learned, one thing I've learned in the last six months is how to make positive habits. Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at the grammar in this sentence. We're doing grammar, everybody. <gasps> so, one thing I've learned in the last six months is how to make a positive habit. This sentence is what we call a complex sentence because it has a number of grammar features which make it complex. What grammar features can you see in this sentence? If you're very, very, very grammar expert, then can you type in the chat? What features of this can you see? What grammar features? Demos says, sir, please speak normal. <laughs> okay, Demos, I will. To be honest, Daisy, that was a bit faster than normal. Normal is probably about this. This is about normal. But you people do speak faster sometimes, but abnormal is about here. So everyone's saying present perfect. Yes, we have the present perfect. That's one. There are three other interesting grammar features. You've got the present perfect. What else? Past perfect? No, there's no past perfect. Sorry, Maria, but good try. It's very close. It was the present perfect. The infinitive. Mm. Yeah, maybe. We could say that make, make a positive habit is an infinitive. Make a positive habit. I can accept that. Subject plus predicate, says Maria, being very clever. Very difficult to find a sentence that does not have a subject and a predicate in English. It is possible, but it's very difficult. Oh, Anawat. Anawat, you... You're not very honest sometimes, eh? You'd said you had not very good English. That's not true. You have really good English. If you know what a cleft sentence is, you're obviously advanced. Okay. Well done, Anawa. That's a good job. So, yes, we have a cleft sentence. So, a cleft sentence is the difference between I like cheese and what I like is cheese. I like cheese. What I like is cheese. Okay. So, I've learned how to make positive habits versus one thing I've learned is 
how to make a positive habit. That's a cleft sentence. Advanced grammar. We also have ellipsis. What is ellipsis? Does anyone know what's happened here with ellipsis? Don't worry, Pallavi, but do watch the stream later. And hey, make sure you come to the Prof Rich stream in 50 minutes, youtube.com slash Rich. And we are going to talk about a story. I'm going to tell you a story. That's right, Romelia. So ellipsis is a mission. It's when you cut a word. And here, the word that's cut is which or that. So we have ellipsis there. So we've got clefts, cleft sentence, ellipsis of which or that, present perfect, and a contraction. Of course, in English, we always use contractions. Always use contractions. The full form is very unusual and very formal. Only for emphasis. Most of the time, contractions. In writing and speaking. Speaking always. In writing, almost always. Okay, cleft sentence, ellipsis, present perfect and contraction. So that's the complicated way to look at that. The easy way to look at it is to say it's a phrase. And the phrase is one thing I've learned in the last six months is one thing I've learned in the last six months is one thing I've learned in the last six months is. So. What is one thing you've learned in the last six months? It can be a skill like playing guitar or playing piano. It can be a hobby like making coffee or playing video games. It can be information like you've learned what a cleft sentence is. It can be a fact, a fact. Penguins are the fastest bird in the sea, maybe the fastest thing in the sea, not sure. So what is one thing you've learned in the last six months? Type your answers in the chat. One thing I've learned in the last six months is silence is more powerful than words, says Daisy. That's deep. That's deep. Very deep. There's a number of quotes about that, Daisy. Silence is one of the hardest arguments to refute. A well-timed silence is the most commanding expression. The right word may be effective, but no word was ever effective as a rightly timed pause. So Daisy's getting philosophical. Teacher, look, I'm very colourful today. Yeah, I moved house. This is my new house. It's cool, isn't it? Do you like the yellow? <laughs> I just bought that from Ikea, my yellow, to go with the red. The red was already in the place. One thing I've learned in the last six months is how to draw better with watercolour, says Lucia Mosca. Very good. That's cool, Lucia. Are you taking classes or do you do it on your own? Ayai Phobia says, what I've learned in the last six months is that one shouldn't trust internet information. Oh, Ayai Phobia. Come on, you need to learn that. <laughs> I have a better lesson for you. One shouldn't trust any information. Deep. 
One thing I've learned in the last six months is singing, says Maria del Carmen. Are you singing in English? When you're in the shower, you sing in English. Why do people sing in the shower? It's because they think people can't hear them because of the water, right? So in the shower, and we can sing in English, right? I've had a hard day's night, and I've been working like a dog. <laughs> the Beatles are pretty good for learning English. None of that. What's his name? None of that. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. Okay, forget that nonsense. Go to the 60s, 70s and 80s. You'll get some good music there. My parents' generation were right, okay? They were right. Listen to the Gen Xers. They were right. Listen, you millennials, all right? I'm telling you. I'm a millennial, actually, unfortunately. <laughs> But I'm telling you, Gen Z, right? Listen to them. They're right. 60s, 70s, 80s. It's best music. All right. So we're talking about all these things you've learned in the last six months. Let's move on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a part of a talk about learning. I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read an extract of a talk about learning. Lifelong learning. Don't do anything. Just listen. Can you do that? No typing. Just listen. I'll read it twice. Are you ready? Just listen. Put your pen down. Notepad away. Right. Okay. Things move fast in the modern world. What we think is relevant today might be obsolete tomorrow. So it's critical that we become lifelong learners. Do not let fear of making the wrong career choice paralyze you. Each experience, whether it aligns with your long-term goals or not, brings with it important lessons and skills. I'll say that again. Things move fast in the modern world. What we think is relevant today might be obsolete tomorrow. So it's critical that we become lifelong learners. Do not let fear of making the wrong career choice paralyze you. Each experience, whether it aligns with your long-term goals or not, brings with it important lessons and skills. Okay. Try to write the words you heard. It's impossible to be perfect. Just try to write the information that you heard. Okay, so what, what did you hear just then? There are five sentences. Oh, Daisy asked for mouth cam. <laughs> Sorry, Daisy. I'll do it. I'll do it later. Oh, good job, Sonia. Very nice. So while the participants in chat are writing what they remember, I'm going to tell you all about this activity. This activity is called Dictagloss. The activity is teacher reads something, Teacher reads something again, and then students try to write it in their own words. Now, 
the important thing about this activity is not being perfect. It's that you, we get the information you understand. You put it in your own words and then you compare your words to the original words. And with this comparison, you can often learn about vocabulary that you could use that you don't use. So it's an excellent, it's an excellent activity for finding new vocabulary. And it's also a very good activity for practicing comprehension. It's one of my favorite types of activity to do in the classroom. And I do dictogloss about once or twice a month in my classes. So, well done. Well done, Lulia, Prabjot, Fleur, Sonia, Anoa, Daisy, Maria del Carmen, Manuel, Gordillo, Sonia Botarini. Uh, yeah, we're getting some really good, we're getting some really, really, really good contributions here. Well done, everybody. Absolutely fantastic. So, I will now show you the original words. And you can compare, compare your words to the original words. All right. So here's the original words. And Daisy wanted mouth cam. So let's do that. We, uh, this is complicated, Daisy. <laughs> uh, da, da, da. Ooh. Ah, there we go. Kind of. Mouth cam. All right. <laughs> right. Is that good enough? Do you want bigger? <laughs> it's kind of difficult. Things are in the way. Do you need the... No, we don't want the text. We don't want the text with the mouth cam. Okay, here we go. So mouth cam, in case you want to practice the pronunciation of this. All right. Here we go. Natural pronunciation. Let me get into the zone. The best way to do natural pronunciation is to imagine you're really doing that. So I'm giving, giving a presentation about lifelong learning. So one of the main points from all the things that we've talked about here is that things move fast in the modern world. What we think is relevant today might well be obsolete tomorrow. So essentially, it's critical that we become lifelong learners. We cannot let the fear of making the wrong career choice paralyze us. Each experience, each and every experience, whether it aligns with your long-term goals or not, brings with it important lessons and sometimes useful skills. Okay, I changed the words a little bit, which is normal when you do natural pronunciation, <laughs> but okay. So there's the text again. Now, does anyone have, oh, oh, I see. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> okay, does anyone have questions? We're about to talk about vocabulary. I want to look at the useful and interesting vocabulary in this text. Obsolete means out of date. Old and not working. Obsolete is out of date, old and not working. Paralyze, says Sadie. Paralyze means can't move. Paralyze means you can't move.
Rakna says, I want to be a native speaker, but I don't know how to start. You have already started, Rakna. What you do now is keep going. I'll give you a really good tip, Rakna. Really good tip. You ready? Subscribe to youtube.com slash Professor Reach. <laughs> we do two live streams a week. And I talk a lot about how to learn English yourself. How you can practice and learn English. We call this Learner Autonomy. Obsessed. What does obsessed mean? Have we got obsessed here? I don't remember obsessed. Obsessed? Obsessed isn't there, is it? Where is obsessed? Anyway, obsessed means can't think about anything else. So if you're obsessed about something, it means you always think about that. You all, so obsessed, if I'm obsessed about cheese, then I always think about cheese. Cheese, 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 cheese. You're obsessed. You're obsessed about cheese. Hello, Julia. A line. Yes, I was waiting for that. I was waiting for that. A line. Well, let's talk about a line. We'll start with a line. Okay. So a line... A line actually means when you move something, so it is donk in line with something else. That's literally so metaphorically, it means be compatible and cohesive with something or even become so if something aligns with you then it becomes compatible with you so you want to align your action with your goals because you want your action to be compatible with your goals okay if your action is out of alignment with your goals then it means you're doing the wrong thing right means you're going in the wrong direction. You need to align your goals. So align with something. Very useful phrase. Let's practice it. When else could we use align with something? I'll give you an example in the chat. Her and her husband are aligned on basically everything. They have such a good marriage. So I want some examples in the chat how to use align with. Examples in the chat, how to use align with. Examples in the chat, how to use align with. Align with also means agree with. Well, I agree with you. I align with you. Not quite, but similar. Like, my beliefs are in alignment with yours. Yes. What you've said aligns with my beliefs. Yes. But I align with you? No. Why are your sen sentences it her and her husband, not she and her husband? <laughs> That's a bloody good question, isn't it? Because I would say she's aligned, but I've said her and her husband. Interesting. 
That's really interesting. Him and his wife are aligned on basically everything. Huh. How about that? That's <laughs> that's the first time I've noticed that. Because obviously, the one we know about is when I say, like, me and you, instead of I and you, right? Like, in English, people normally say me and you, not you and I. The traditional grammar says you and I, but nobody says that. Everybody says me and you, <laughs> right? The Queen used to say... Um, you and I. In fact, the Queen says you and one, <laughs> but um, but people on the street say me and you. Most people say me and you. And I think this is an example of the same thing, but it's not it's not a question I've had, and it's not something I've discussed before. So I'll have to think about it. But I can tell you that she and her husband sounds weird to me. sounds weird all right well done everyone we've got some great examples there thank you very much for maria hint Miriam. very good well done evie robin renit matilde the students have to align some synonyms in the test not sure about that matilde don't quite understand that one um align maybe they have to they have to find a solution that aligns with the answer. We can have that. They have to find a solution that aligns with the answer. It's kind of like fit with, isn't it? Fit with. Fit with. Let's have that on there. Line with is kind of like fit with. Yeah. Great. Okay, let's have a look at another one. So we've also got this. I love this phrase. I love this phrase. What we think is... Today will be tomorrow. What we think is today is tomorrow. What we think is today will be tomorrow. So what, what other kinds of things could we say here? What we think is great today is boring tomorrow. What we think is spicy today will be mild tomorrow. What we think is cuckoo today will be quack, quack, quack tomorrow. <laughs> what we think is advanced today will be ancient tomorrow. Oh, that's really good, Daisy. I'm just going to expand that a little bit. What we think is mind-blowing technology today will be ancient junk tomorrow. What we think is practice today will be useless tomorrow. Uh, really? Is that... Uh, can, you, can you expand on that, Maria del Carmen? What we think is practice today will be useless tomorrow? Is that, is that true? Because I can't think of an example when something was practice and then became useless. Like, if we go back to 4,000 years ago and how they learned second languages 4,000 years ago, then they had ways of doing it. Now, those methods are not efficient for most people, but they're not useless. They're not useless. Like, if you do book-to-book -book or scroll-to-scroll -scroll grammar translation, it's boring and difficult and not very efficient, but it's not useless. I'm Arabic and I want to learn English. Alhamdulillah. Okay, well, you're in the right place. 
junk is a metaphor made by the teacher. We'll be only metal. Uh, yeah, you do think of junk, but not necessarily metal. It just means rubbish. It's just rubbish. You can already use holograms, Daisy. They already have it. I actually think, yeah, I think holograms are possible, but before before holograms become mainstream, I think it will be like VR. VR will be mainstream. So, but not with the big VR headset. It'll just be like a little, little thing. You just go like, whoop, little goggles like this. So you just have them on your head here and you just slip them down. And then suddenly I still see my room. So I still see everything perfect, but now the goggles make it so I also see other people in my room who are around the world, right? And we're talking together, for example. I think it's called augmented reality. Augmented reality. Right, move on to the next one. Don't let... Don't let bah, paralyze you. Don't let bah, paralyze you. <laughs> Has anyone ever been camping and you get woken up by the sheep? You're camping, then it's like half past five or six. You're sleeping. Ah, I love sleeping when camping. It's so nice. And then suddenly you hear... And you're like, oh... Don't let fear paralyze you. Don't let sadness paralyze you. Don't let laziness paralyze you. Don't let self-sabotage and negative mindsets paralyze you. This sound gets my goat. It's supposed to be sheep, not goats. Don't let self-loathing paralyze you. Wow, self-loathing, that sounds tough. That's really hard. Woken up by the rooster. Coo -coo -coo. Oh, by the way, everybody, do uh, check out Professor Rich. After this, we'll be talking about a story. I'll be telling you a story on youtube.com slash Professor Rich. That's after this. So in 20 minutes, I'll be telling you a story, a positive story about my institution where I work. I'm a lecturer at a college and I'm going to tell you a story really Fun little story. Really fun little story. Fun little story. Hello, everybody. Oops. Did you hear that? <laughs> Yeah, I will do Daisy. Just give me a second. Let's just uh, make a make a link. Bonk. Right. I'm going to say, don't let too much choice paralyze you. And the reason is because I think a lot of people get paralyzed when they have too much choice. Yuri Lopez says, don't let grumpy people paralyze you. Yeah, I hear that. Difficult to not be grumpy yourself sometimes, isn't it? But yeah. Hello, everyone. Conquer the fear of failure. Yes. Nice. 
Noise. All right, everyone. Brilliant. So what is lifelong learning? It's the topic of today's stream. And it is the ongoing, voluntary and self-motivated pursuit of knowledge for personal or professional growth. And it is absolutely necessary. But, you know, are you doing it? What do you plan to learn in the next year? How will you do it? And when will you start? Let's get real. Forget about English. Forget about English. Okay. I know everyone's going to say English. Forget it. Something else. Not English. What do you plan to learn in the next year? How will you do it? And when will you start? Oh, my university, I'm going to learn about political science. No. What do you want to learn about? And what are you going to do? What are you going to learn about that you want to learn about in the next year? Let's, let's see. Romelia is desperate for a British accent. You can do it, Romelia. Look, you want the, the number one tip... If you want to do accent, buy yourself a microphone for your computer that has a headphone input, right? You can get USB ones on Amazon and you can get them on eBay secondhand, pretty cheap. Okay. I'll post you a, a picture. So Samsung CO1U Pro, okay, that one. It's a Samsung CO1U Pro. That's a hundred pounds new. You can get second hand for fifty pounds, right? And you see this hole here, the headphone slot. When you plug in that, it means you can hear yourself with no delay. Zero latency. That's important. No delay. So I'm doing it now, but this microphone is really expensive and I have other equipment, but I can hear myself in my headphones with no delay. And when you do that, you can really hear your own voice and you can start to really adjust it if you want to adjust your accent. That's my number one tip if you're really serious about having a British accent. Get that. A link to order it. My word. Okay, hang on. Well, I can only give you the I can only give you the, the British link though. That's the thing. I can only give you the British link. But alright. This was, it was the first microphone I had. If you look at all the old Prof Rich videos, it's the microphone I use there. It's a very, very, very good microphone. But the, the critical thing about it is it's that, that headphone slot that you can plug your headphone in, right? So it plugs into your computer USB and then you put headphone in there and you can hear your voice with zero latency. That means instant. Uh, please use English only in the chat. Thank you. That's if you're very serious about accent, okay? I'm telling Romelia because I know Romelia and I know that she really wants to get that accent, okay? But it's still a lot of work. It's just this is the technique. So Robin says, I'm going to find a cooking course in the city I live. That's fantastic. What kind of food do you want to cook, Robin? GMAX wants to learn graphic design, YouTube and self-teaching. Self-teaching is great to learn, GMAX. Yeah, it's um, autonomous learning, and it's basically what I try to teach all the time. If you want to learn graphic design, then there's loads of things on YouTube to teach you that. And learning YouTube, uh, what does that mean? British food, says Robin. Wow, what's that? Like pies, pasties? Or do you mean like a Sunday roast? Romelia, it's not true. 
that a non-native can't achieve it. That's not true. I've, I've, I've had students who already had it, actually, when we started the class. And they started learning as an adult. So it's not true. I don't know who has told you that. You can definitely get the accent. But it's work. It's like, it's probably more work than becoming a good singer. Okay? So imagine if I said to you, right, if you were, if you, let's imagine you were not a good singer and I say, you need to become a good singer. How much effort would that take? How long would that take? Okay? Now, basically, getting an accent is a bit more difficult than that. So it's a bit more difficult than becoming a good singer. Okay? It's possible for everyone. It's possible. But it's a bit more difficult than becoming a good singer, in my opinion. Right, everybody, it's question time. So any questions you've got, we already are over time, but if you've got any questions, you can download the notes from today from the link. And I'll be here for a few more minutes before I have a little break. And then I'll be streaming on youtube.com slash Professor Rich. Oh, I forgot to share it. Hang on. <laughs> Just got the notification. One second, folks. I forgot to share the notes. And people are trying to download them and it's not working. Uh... Okay, that's fixed. Sorry. How do I improve my grammar? What do you mean, Shifa? Give me an example of a problem you have with the grammar. Uh, Pallavi, how old are the students I teach? So in my career, I've taught students from age five to age 75. But right now, the students I teach are normally about 26, 27, about there. So I do have some students who are 17, and I have some students who are in their 50s, but the average age of my current in-person students are about 26, 27. But yeah, in the past, I've taught kids, I've taught teenagers. I really like teaching teenagers, actually. If I, if I could choose the age group, then I would choose probably 15 to 18. 15 to 18. Like, energetic. They want to learn. Some people say that that's a terrible age group. Like, you have loads of problems, they don't want to do it. I've never had that problem. I've never had a problematic group of older teenagers. I've always found them fun, interesting, uh, interested in the class. Uh, I don't know. It's my, it's my favorite group, especially the older ones, 16 to 18. They're really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And of course, they all want to go to university. For example, university in America or university in the UK. So they really want the English as well. But they're fu really fun, really creative, really fun. How can I get an IELTS score of 7,777? Uh, you can't because that doesn't exist. <laughs> Do you mean how can I get an IELTS score of 7? 
Well, that's not a simple question to answer, GMAX. I think the first thing I would say is you need to do a mock test and see where is your where is your level now and where is your weakness. So where's your speaking, your writing, your reading? You do an IELTS mock test and then let's see where your level is. Matilde says, how can I improve my fluency? One thing you can try, Matilde, is auto-narration. So auto-narration is basically speaking to yourself. And remember, when you're improving fluency, don't worry about accuracy. Just focus on speaking, speaking, speaking fluently. Okay? So if you make a mistake here or there, it's okay. Don't worry about that. Right? So here's some fluency improvement. Oh, so I've just finished my live stream. And, oh, I've got another live stream to do. So... I better have another coffee. I probably should finish this in a minute so I have time to have another coffee. And then after I've done my next live stream, I'm going to have to have something to eat because I haven't had breakfast yet. So that was me doing auto-narration. Auto-narration is just saying your thoughts out loud, but in English. In English. So you're just talking to yourself out loud. That's auto-narration. It's great fluency practice. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me. I will be streaming in five minutes on my own channel. This has been Oxford Online English. And my name has been Teacher Rich. Please do smash that like button. And I will catch you later. Cheers, everybody. Have a lovely, lovely weekend. But I, I hope to see you. I hope to see you on my channel as well. All right. Bye-bye, everyone, and bye-bye now.